If you love beauty history, if you love compacts, if you love art deco design, we're going to meet the author of this book, American Compacts of the Art Deco Era. This is one of the most fabulous books I have ever come across. It's so detailed, there's so much information in here, and Howard and Joanne and Dr. Michael Mont, the research that was put into this book is pretty mind-blowing for things that are from a century ago that are so hard to find. These are such rare pieces. For some I met Howard Melton was at the IPBA convention and I totally fangirled. I could not believe I was meeting the author of this book, my holy grail book for compacts. Howard is this highly esteemed lawyer and when you talk to him, you get that vibe. Like he absorbs so much knowledge and he knows everything about these compacts and why compacts even started. So of course I'm here to interview them and I'm gonna share it all with you plus their collection. It is so fascinating. Okay, you collect wind-up toys, you collect life magazines, and then you started collecting compacts. But what got you into the particular compact? So J.M. Fisher and Elgin. Well, American. what happened, there was a huge toy show that actually still exists in Chicago. There was a guy selling antique toys. He, his wife was there with him and had a basket of compacts. And she sort of got fascinated by the compacts. And uh, that's really started the collection. Joanne was the first. I saw all of these compacts and it was in a shoebox. I picked that one up and I liked it. And you're thinking, where has this been? I just would love to know who's had this and what dance mm -hmm. they went to or whatever. So I thought about it the whole time. I, that'd be really fun to collect them. And I, you know, I'd love to buy it if it's still there. And when we went to the next show, which was maybe six months later, it was still there. Mm -hmm. So that was our first. And it was really because of the Art Deco, the yeah, aesthetic and the modernness. Yeah. Well. A lot of the modern design. Yeah. And what happened then, then the reason we ended up uh, focusing particularly on Elgin American and James Fisher, they both made uh, various types of metal, you know, trinkets, uh, charms, all kinds of things. What happened is 1925, there was a huge exposition in Paris a modern design, and it was essentially considered really the start of the whole Art Deco movement. Uh, the manufacturers started the ornamentation of the compacts became more and more complicated. Yeah. You had designers that were influenced by what was going on in Europe, you know, started adopting the Art Deco design concepts. Mm -hmm. Elgin American and also Jan Fisher started doing a, a little bit of Art Deco. They changed their entire line to a modern design. And so we, that's kind of how we got started because we both, we built two modern houses. We really were totally interested yeah. in modern design. Apparently one of the owners attended that show in Paris. Elgin has a lot of history behind it and they know a lot there, mm -hmm. but people have done research and then that's when it started. Elgin American went back to the 1890s. A lot of what they did was actually in gold. Uh, then they started doing more and more sterling. The compacts that we collect are nearly all nickel alloy, which actually is, is exceptional. Probably the oldest compact is actually the Elgin's from the 19, early 1920s. The Elgin actually, first patent was 1923, although they, we know that they started selling in 1922. Compacts were not, they really didn't even exist until after World War I. That's when the compacts evolved. But, so it wasn't always like decorative vanity items? Like it really was meant to be used when you were outside the home? Oh, and... absolutely. They evolved over the, in the 1920s, became very popular as a gift. It's yeah. all pre-depression. Uh. The depression changed everything. That you talk about in your book, which I thought was absolutely fascinating, to see how the changes right. go through the years right. after that. Compacts were designed and started to be manufactured probably a year before they were actually issued. Oh, yeah. Even though the, the stock market crashed in the, the fall of 29, the economy was coming back. Unfortunately, there was some decisions on the part of the Federal Reserve and the, you know, the bank and the financial sector of the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, they were very fearful of inflation. They tightened money supply and then everything crashed oh. so so 1930 in other words if, if you if you were designing for 1930 you were you were doing it in 29 one of the reasons some you know some of the compacts are quite scarce for that era is simply the fact that no one had any money to they, they couldn't they couldn't buy them so they yes. wouldn't but by the time they actually came out in 1930 1931 so oh. does it matter to you whether there are like 
the components inside because some of the components have the actual lipstick, the powder, the rouge, or you're more concerned about the outside the compact? Uh, some of the compacts actually what happened, people took out the inside and turned them into, uh, I assume, something like a pill box. We kind of avoid that. We like mint. <laughs> yes. Me too. I think yes. it's just good for people who might be starting collecting, maybe to know what to look for. And yeah. Whenever you first start collecting, look for mint condition. Look for a box. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we like mint. <laughs> in the box. Mint yeah, in the box prefer. is the best. <laughs> yeah, that's the best, but they're hard to find too. Mm. I'm not so concerned, uh, you know, the couple of things, uh, there's always a mirror inside, mm -hmm. oh. and I try to Sometimes avoid, uh, I generally avoid ones where the mirror's missing, <laughs> the mirror's cracked. That's tough. Yeah. You know, in some cases, the 1928, 29, you'll find most of the compacts still had, they had rouge, powder, some of them had uh, little, you know, very small lipsticks. Mm -hmm. A lot of times in that era, the lipstick part will be missing. Mm. That doesn't bother. I mean, I'd prefer it to be there, yeah. but it's, I will probably would yeah. still buy it. Some of them had places for money, also. Oh coin yeah, socks. right. And there yeah. was a coin. coin. The yeah, there's yeah. always just a nickel and a dime. Yeah, but not yeah. much. You really didn't <laughs> need <laughs> much of the 1920s right. to get things. Right. Yeah. Back then, these uh, these particular compacts, the standard size was two inches by two inches. We had the American innovation was to add a chain. They're referred to as dance compacts. The idea is you put the chain around your middle finger and you carried it to the dance. Or, that, or arms, some of the chains. Things yeah. arms. Some of them actually <laughs> were, became a necklace. By the 30s, most of them uh, no longer had the lipstick. Mm. They still had the rouge and the powder. Mm. Of course, the, there was a mirror. As the, the depression rapidly moved on, companies, they dropped the chains. Then they dropped the rouge, and then, of course, they also drastically changed the ornamentation on the outside. They also changed the metal. Cheaper metal, Cheaper less metal. design, only a powder. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. The original compacts, they, the powder was all loose powder. There's something called powder boxes. Very small little box, you know, little round uh, containers. There was a mirror on the inside lid, mm -hmm. but it was just loose powder. Yeah. Uh, but the problem is with that is if it sprang open, <laughs> yeah. You had powder all over yeah. wherever you had a mess. It still yeah. happens even yeah. in modern times with my powder, my vanity. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. the earlier compacts had these really, in some cases, extremely elaborate metal mechanisms mm. that dispensed the powder. In the 30s, the later 30s, they had you know, developed pressed powder. So the pressed powder compact was created because loose powder was so messy. Yeah. Yeah, right. Sure. Yeah. It was just, yeah, kind right, of exactly. such yeah. a simple thing, but you right. know, we don't really know why compacts were created, so it started with loose powder. It started with loose powder. I have a few favorites. Okay. That is one you of my favorites. You can show me the other favorites, too. I know you mentioned that one. Well, I love the one on the back of the book. You, you know how much fun this book. is? I mean, no one ever even wants to see our compacts. Um, oh my God, I could look for days. <laughs> why I wanted to interview because it's one of my favorite collections in the world. They like, sold them in jewelry stores, so they were like a gem. Yeah, <laughs> but that's what they look like even today. They're yeah, so I know. Amazing, if you, you And you can't believe they're 100 years old. Yeah, yeah. no, and it's much cooler than anything being created today. Yeah, there's yeah. no comparison. No comparison. Yeah. So what's your favorite piece of the Oh, I love the Fisher, the, the woman carrying the world. I think it's actually fantastic. Incredible detail, considered feminist from 1930, which is nearly 100 years ago. But this particular compact, I, mean, I just think there's a, it says a lot about the times, uh, about the role of women, all, all kinds of things. This one I did in your honor, picked in your honor. I like seeing, I, I, you know I have this one. I know you do. Yeah, and you, you, I think you said that you knew that I had it. Well, it's one saw... of the very few Elgins that I That's have. Right. I sold it to you. I'm interrupting the video because I do want to show you. I have a few of these compacts. This one, he had an extra. And this one is also Elgin American. And this is that geometric deco design. Oh my God. You guys know David Bowie with the lightning bolt down his face? Like, that's this. That's this in the 1920s and he was in the 70s. You see guys, when I buy compacts, if there's nothing inside, I'm less apt to buy them. And that's why I asked Howard, does it matter if there's like lipstick inside or rouge? And he's more concerned really with the compacts, but a mint condition compact, which he has mostly, they do have the products inside. So this one, you can see the lipstick. She's, she's seen better days, but there is the powder puff and the rouge puff. Okay, let's just go ahead and take it out. Obviously here, this would have been loose powder, but this is the original puff that came with it. And this one, 
still has the rouge inside. <gasps> if I was a flapper, this is what I'd be carrying. All of these, I'd be carrying all of these. What am I talking about? As long as they're loaded with lipstick and rouge though. I'm obviously not gonna touch their collection. I just wanna show you this one. I want to open it. So obviously you have the chain because of course the flappers, you know, you needed your little vanity on your arm so you could do the Charleston and go dancing. And obviously, yes, this is 1920s. So basically this is how you would get your loose powder. It would come out of here, or if you needed to refill, you have the hole. And then when you wanted to close it, isn't that stunning? This is a JM Fisher, and it is one of my all time favorite compacts in the entire world. The deco bodies, so beautiful. Okay, inside of this one, you'd have rouge and powder, loose powder, and you could have lipstick and even your eyeshadow eyeliner. So you could have everything. This one actually is empty, but you see you could put in the refills there. It's kind of shocking though, like that some of these survive today in mint condition if you think of a flapper going out dancing with this on their wrist, but this is an Elgin American and this one actually does have product inside. It's so beautiful. It is like a piece of jewelry. So they have a Montreal collection, but this one with the faces, and now you can see like the year. I love that peacock. 1931. I see these come up online quite often. If this is a style that you like, the guilloche, you can find these pretty often on eBay and Etsy. Quite beautiful. Okay, so this one, let's open her up. Mm. There's the rouge inside and the lipstick, of course the loose powder. Back in the day, all of your rouge would have this little like foil piece over top of it when it was brand new. And sometimes you can find them still with the foil on top, just in general, like 1920s compacts. Okay, let's take out the lipstick of this one. I mean, like how tiny is it? I can almost barely pick it up. And you would push this up and of course the lipstick. It is in there, but it's a hundred years old and you can tell. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not gonna put it on. I think they had this one, but I think they had the lipstick with it. Now this one inside, this you might have your powder on one side and rouge on the other, but this one is empty. So the dolly bird that was in the book I just showed you, I believe Howard has that one in the vault because the one that he has is one of the most rare Elgin American compacts that exist. I do have the bird in hand dolly Elgin American Compact. While this is in mint condition, I guess the gold one is not as rare. Obviously, Salvador Dali was known for his surrealism and the head becomes a lipstick. It didn't come with any lipstick inside. You would just put your refills and at this time, that was very popular to have refills for all of the lipsticks. So the wings would open and there is your compact. And this bottom piece, I think you could keep pills inside of there. This compartment. There's your powder puff. A lot of people don't believe that Dolly actually created this design, but Howard goes into a lot of detail in the book, of course, so I will let you read it. In this particular instance, there was a, a woman from Juliet, as it turned out, who was started putting some Elgin American, which obviously was one of our focuses. And we bought a couple things from her. And at some point, we started emailing each other. She had these bins, hundreds and hundreds of compacts. So she starts getting them out and getting them out and getting them out. And I was going, no, I don't want that one. I'll take that one. Okay, I'll take that one. And finally he said, how much will you take for all of them? And so we ended up buying hundreds of compacts. Many of we them. We have bins of compacts, and how many did we want? Like, oh, Well, we didn't, we, we wanted, <laughs> I mean, we, we wanted a fraction. So this is maybe, why we have so many. Maybe, maybe but we would still be there looking at those if we didn't. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I was maybe, horrified. You're buying all of them. Just like make it easy so we take yeah. your time around. But it was a great exactly. story. We, That's yeah, what we did. We, we, drove down, we drove down to Joliet and, uh, and we came back with all these compacts. <laughs> yeah. So we should also add we have a storage locker with all those compacts <laughs> that we have to rent. Yeah. Maybe I should mention that I, f I found Howard on eBay. Yeah. <laughs> and I bought a compact from him, so yeah. if you want to sell on eBay, you know, any of those compacts in storage, and people out there watching might want them. Yeah, <laughs> that would be good. I just want to thank 
Joanne and Howard so much for making a dream of mine come true. I really wanted to celebrate them as collectors. Not only are they preserving beauty history, but the knowledge and the information that they put behind it all, which helps collectors like me or you, if you're a collector, a book like this is absolutely invaluable. Or if you just want this book because you just want to look at the beauty, but you don't want to collect. So thank you, Howard, Joanne, and also Dr. Mont, who I hope to interview one day. Thank you all for this amazing book. Of course, I'm going to link it below if you'd like to purchase it. And if you'd like to support Howard and Joanne, I know they don't have social media, but definitely leave a comment below. I know they're gonna watch this video. So if you wanna leave them a message, comment below so they can see it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to bring many more videos like this. I want to celebrate these collectors and this was such a dream come true for me. So thank you so much for watching and of course I hope to see you on the next one.